Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. We are going to learn about trusting God. But before we do that, we are going to worship Jesus. So stand up, get your hands warmed up, get your feet warmed up, because we're going to dance and sing and think about how amazing God is. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Let's sing together, I have decided mm -hmm. to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. He gives me hope for each new day. I'm gonna follow Jesus. He lights my path all along the Turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. He gives me hope for each new day. I'm gonna follow Jesus. He lights my path all along the way. Wherever he leads, I'm gonna follow Jesus. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No 
turning back, no turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. No turning back, no turning back. Fantastic. That's fantastic. It's important that we make that uh, uh, called a declaration. I've decided to follow Jesus, and I'm not going to turn my back no, no. matter it's what a happens. Choice. Yes, we, that's we have right. To choose. That's right. It is a choice. Right. It is a choice. We do have to choose. That's exactly it. This is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how J E S U S came down to earth and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need. So I'll remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. And when you see, he's there. He cares, and when you see keys there, and when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. I'm reading my B I B L E, and this is what it says to me. It tells me that I'm never ever alone. I'm learning how. J E S U S came down to earth and gave his best. Without a doubt, the best friend you'll ever know. Our God knows exactly what I need, so I'll remember this. Let's go. When you ask, He cares, and when you see, He's there. And when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And when you ask, He cares. See, he's there, and when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And when you ask, he cares, and when you see, he's there, and when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And when you ask, he cares, and when you see, he's So I'll remember this. Let's go. When you ask, he cares. And when you see, he's there. And when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. And when you ask, he cares. And when you see, he's there. And when you knock, 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 God opens up the door. Awesome to be able to worship Jesus and sing about him and think about how amazing he is and that he saved our lives. So we are going to learn about trusting God today and the big idea is that we can definitely trust God in everything. So I have a question for you. When someone says just trust God, well what does that mean? Well, trust is a word that is an action. So it's something we actually have to do. And then God, he's the one that created heaven and earth and he's above everything. So when we trust God, we actually have this 
unshakable belief that God is who he says he is, the maker of heaven and earth, and the God of the universe, and, and guess what? He can do what he says he can do, and he said he could save the world, and he did. He already saved the world through Jesus, his son. So when I think of um, an example from my life and trusting people, I think of the summer, and you know how you go swimming, and generally there's a lifeguard there, somebody who is designated to watch over everybody and keep them safe and help anybody that needs help. So when I think of swimming, I put a lot of trust in a lifeguard. When my kids are in the pool or in a lake or the ocean, I trust that a lifeguard can do what they say they can do, that they can go and swim and save somebody who is having trouble in the water. So that's also what it means to trust. It's really putting your reliance on someone or something. So I have a special guest here to help me with an experiment. And come on over. This is Gemma. She's a kid at Rock Kids and she is going to help me. You're going to help me, right? Mm -hmm. um, learn about trusting God? Yeah. You're going to help them remember what it's like to trust God? Yeah. Okay, so here's what you need to do. You need to follow all of my instructions, even if they don't make sense. Okay, so you're going to take this cup here. So put both hands out like this. Okay, you're going to put this cup here and this cup here. Hold it nice and high so people can see. All right, so I'm now going to add some water to each of the cups. Do you still trust me? No. No? Okay. So um, this is water. I'm going to take a drink. Mm -hmm. That's refreshing. Okay, so we're going to pour this in. Okay, that one has some water in it. And then we're going to pour some water in this one. Okay, that one has water in it. So, all right, keep them nice and high. Good. All right, now I'm going to take this one because I'm also going to do this. Okay, do you trust me, Gemma, that when you pour that on your head, you're not going to get wet? No! I know, sometimes it's a little tricky to trust, especially if it looks like you're in danger or you're going to get wet. Sometimes it's really hard to trust that what I'm telling you is true. So, I want you to put that cup on your head like this. Good. All right, now I want you to close your eyes and... I want you to spin around two times. Spin around two times. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, don't fall. Okay. All right. Come on back over. Okay. Now you can open your eyes. Okay. Open your eyes. All right. Now keep it on your head. Okay. So I want you to dump the water on your head and you're not going to get wet. Do you trust me? No. That you're not going to get wet? Okay, are you ready? Three, two, one. Ah! Did you get wet? No. No, she didn't get wet. She trusted me. And, no, I didn't. well, she trusts me now. Do you trust me now? Yeah. Yeah, she didn't trust me at the beginning because it didn't make sense, right? You're obviously going to get wet if you pour a cup of water on your head, but I had a little science happening in that cup to make sure you wouldn't get wet. But did you know what was happening? No, right? So sometimes when we trust God, we don't really know what's going to happen. We just have to kind of take a little leap of faith. And that's what we're going to talk about today in our story. All right, Gemma, high five. Thank you so much for helping. You are such a good help. Say bye to everybody. Bye. All right. All right, so we're going to get our Bibles and we are going to look at three different scriptures. Now, here's what the Bible says about trusting, and we're not going to turn to these two verses. We're going to turn to the last one, though. It's a really cool story about three dudes that trusted God above everything. So, in Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says that trust. we need to trust in the Lord. So, the Word of God says, trust in the Lord with all your heart, right? All of your heart. And lean not on your own understanding, just like 
that didn't make sense that Gemma didn't get wet, but she still did it and she still trusted me enough to pour the cup over her head. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So we are called to trust in God. That's what the Bible says. In Isaiah 26 verse 4, it says, trust in the Lord forever. So do we just trust God for a little bit or forever? Well, the Bible says trust him forever. The Lord himself is the rock. Huh, the Lord is a rock? Let's go back to that in a second. The Lord will keep us safe forever. So is God actually a rock? No, no. That is just an image or a picture that he gives us to show a bit of his character and his ability. So when I think of a rock, I think of something that is a safe place. It's strong. It's not going to crumble. Um, it's there for a really, 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 really long time, but God's even there for longer. It's long lasting and it's something that we can go to in it for safety. So that's what it means by God is a rock, okay? He's there forever, he's a safe place, and we can always go to him and trust in him. He's never gonna change. So, all right, now I want you to get your Bibles. This is Gemma's Bible, she let me borrow, and she wrote cool things on it like, I love you so much, Jesus. So we're gonna go to Daniel, and Daniel is in the Old Testament. So if you don't know how to find Daniel, at the beginning of the Bible is a reference. And you can look up the name of the book in the Bible. So we find Daniel. And it's on page, for this one, 953. So we're going to turn to that page. And it's just after Ezekiel is Daniel. Okay? So we're gonna to go to Daniel 3, so turn the pages until you find Daniel 3, and the title of this is The Image of, the image of Gold and the Blazing Furnace. All right, so here we go. We are gonna learn a very amazing story of three young men who trusted God above everything. So let me get some props here. I'll be right back. Oh, all right, here we go. We got our three characters, Abednego, Meshach, and Shadrach. All right, so I'm gonna put them here. These guys are the main characters in the story and we have a king who is the main character and his name is King Nebuchadnezzar. Whew, that's a big name. So we're gonna call him King Nebi. All right, so King Nebi, he was the king at the time and he was the ruler of Babylon, which is a really powerful kingdom um, in the Old Testament. And he, their kingdom had just finished taking away the Jewish nation from their home. And they were forced to leave and they had to go live in Babylon and they had to go work for all the different places in Babylon. So that's kind of the backstory of what's happening here. So in Daniel 3, verses 1, the whole chapter, we're going to talk about the whole story, and you're going to see that these three young men trusted God even when they were about to die. So I have all my props here that I'm going to bring up. Oh, wait, I forgot a couple. All right, and here we go. So here's how the story goes. You ready? King Nebuchadnezzar. See, crown, King Nebi built a golden statue. Now this is a very small statue um, and very tiny. This one that he built was 90 feet high. That's 18 of me, because I'm five feet tall. 18 of me standing one on top of the other. That is very tall. So he built a golden image for everyone to worship. And he ordered all the important people, so he got all the important people to come to the province and everybody who was anybody went to this dedication ceremony for the statue. Huh, okay, I wonder if it actually looked like this. Probably not. Um, all right, so a herald then proclaimed with a loud voice and that's just a person who like shouts things and t gives announcements. 
They said, attention everyone. Um, when you hear all of the instruments fall to your knees and worship the gold statue, the gold statue that the king, King Nebi, remember, has set up. Anyone who does not kneel or worship will be thrown immediately into a burning furnace. So let's turn on the furnace here. Oh yeah, this one is not going to hurt you. But the real one back in the day would have been like a massive wood stove. All right, so this is a representation of the furnace. Okay, so King Nebuchadnezzar. Um, so what did they command them to do? They commanded them to worship the idol. Remember this thing. Okay. And if they didn't, what was their punishment? They had to be thrown into the furnace of fire. They would be killed if they didn't kneel down and worship this golden statue. Okay. So the instruments, they sounded, they started playing and everyone had to fall to their knees and worship the golden statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Well, not quite everyone. All right, so just then some Babylonians said to King Nebi, remember King Nebi? Long live the king. You gave strict orders, but there are some Jews who here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that will not worship and will not bow down. So they won't bow down to the golden statue. Okay? Does anyone know? Do you know who the Jews worship? They worship God. Yeah. And do you think it was okay for them to worship King Nebuchadnezzar's idol? I mean, he is the king and he told them to do that. No way. It says that God wants you to follow the rules in your land unless it goes against the laws of God. And the laws of God says you can't have any other gods, right? So it is not okay for Jewish, the Jewish people, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It wasn't okay for them to bow down and worship the golden uh, st statue. All right, so uh, King Nebuchadnezzar was furious. King Nebi, he was so angry that he ordered Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, to come and meet with him. So the men were brought in and King Nebi asked, is it true that you refuse to worship the gold statue? Remember the golden statue um, that I've set up? I'm giving you a second chance. But from now on, you must follow my command or you're going to be pitched into the fiery furnace. No questions asked. Who is this God that can rescue you from my power? Hmm. Do you think God could rescue them from King Nebuchadnezzar and the burning furnace? Let's see. All right, here we go. Um, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they answered the king and this is what they said. Your threats mean nothing to us. If you throw us in the fire, the God that we serve can rescue us. He can. He can rescue them from your roaring furnace and anything that you might cook up, O king. But even if he doesn't, this is what I love about the story, even if he doesn't rescue them, it would make no bit of difference, O king. We still wouldn't serve your gods. Remember this thing that King Nebuchadnezzar made? And we wouldn't kneel. So the three young men said they knew God could save them, but even if he chose not to, they would still serve God. Do we trust God that much that we might, you know, die before we give up worshiping God? That's an interesting question. So it's a lot of faith and a lot of trust. All right, so King Nebi, his face turned purple. Well, the Bible says it got all distorted. He was so angry that he tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So he tied their hands and their feet so they couldn't walk. Okay. And he ordered the furnace, this furnace, to be seven times hotter. Seven. Seven times hotter. Wow. That's hot. So uh, how hot? Seven times hotter. Yeah, that's very hot. He ordered the strong men um, from the army to throw them, tie them up and throw them hand, and into the furnace. And because the king was in such a hurry and the furnace was so hot, the flames from the furnace actually killed the men who carried them in. Ooh, 
That is a very, very hot fire and kind of scary if you think about it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, um, so they were thrown into the furnace and their hands and feet were tied. Okay. All right. So here's what happens. And this is the coolest part. Um, suddenly King Nebi, who's watching all of this, he jumped up in alarm. So he's a little scared. And he said, didn't we throw three men in the fire? And they were bound hand and feet. And everyone was like, yeah, we did. That's right. And he said, but look, I see four men. Oh, look who came and showed up to save the day. Four men. And they are walking around freely in the fire, completely unharmed. So, wait, hold on a second. How many men did we, they throw in? Three. And how many men did King Nebuchadnezzar see? Four. Isn't that cool? So Nebuchadnezzar went to the door of the roaring furnace and he called um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God. So at this point, King Nebi recognized that God was the Most High God. Come out here. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego walked out of the fire. Wow, walked out. Isn't that amazing? And guess what? They didn't smell like smoke. None of their clothes were burned up. There was no singed marks on their skin. They were completely safe. Nothing happened to them. So this is cool. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Blessed is the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He sent his angel, which a lot of people think was the son of God, right? He sent his angel and rescued his servants who trusted in him. They ignored the king's orders, King Nebi's orders to worship the idol, right? And they laid their bodies on the line rather than serving and worshiping a God that was not their own. So King Nebi was so amazed by what happened that he said if anyone in his kingdom said anything bad about the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they would be punished so severely and their house would be ripped down. Wow, that's a big turn of events. So this is how powerful God is. So there's three things, three things that I kind of saw about trusting God in here. So I just want to talk about them really quickly. The first thing was that it's, it's awesome when we trust God. And you know what's even kind of cooler is when we trust God when we feel like nobody else around us is trusting God. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were one of the very few people who refused to bow down. And they knew God could save them and they trusted God's power. And sometimes it might feel like you're the only one at your school that, you know, believes in God. And that's not necessarily true, but it might be how you feel. And so it's always important, even if you feel like you're the last one, to just keep trusting God, no matter what. The second thing is that we can trust God because He is the only God who could actually save us. He saved their physical bodies. But more importantly, he saves our souls. He already did that by sending Jesus to be the savior of this world. And the third thing is when you trust God and that shows other people that they can trust God. So King Nebuchadnezzar didn't think God was powerful and didn't even really care about God until Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego actually stood up and said, God is the God of the universe. He is the most high. And then God showed how powerful he was and that helped King Nebuchadnezzar trust in God. Isn't that amazing? So my big question for you is, is God worth trusting? Definitely. He can save your physical body and, but more importantly, he saved our souls, which is amazing. And it's hope for our future. All right, thank you so much for joining us and learning about trusting in God. I hope you enjoyed the story, and we will see you next time. Bye.